No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay, lovely. So we are on YouTube right now. Okay, that's it. Share the content, screen start broadcasting. So th there is no question. We can directly go uh, with the lecture. Okay. Lovely. If if you have uh, if you have any question, please type it in the Q and A. And I see the number of people are decreasing <laughs> exponentially. Things are, I think, getting more complicated, and that's the reason. Uh, well, yes, I will. I will share the solution with all of uh, all of you guys uh, later on. Uh, I have to spend a, let's say thirty minutes or twenty minutes to solve this problem, and I will pass it to you. Good. If uh, if there is no no problem, I mean that's uh, no question. Let's go with again the the tensor formalism. And today we'll be finishing the term tensor formalism, and we will go to uh, Riemannian spaces uh, and uh, the definition of the covariant and contravariant in general formalism and how to drive all of those uh, complicated uh, derivatives. Indeed. So um, let's let's start again with with the definition of the tensor, and we we say well uh, remember that we we are dealing with two kind of uh, vectors, one of them which is changing like that is a i j, a j, and we call these contravariant vector. And there was another one, which was a i j a j, which was covariant vector. And from these, we generalize things to the cases when you have two indices, like for example, t i j, and we say that well, uh, uh, if you look at the way that they are changing in space uh, uh, by changing the coordinate. Indeed, that will be transformed like, uh, like T prime ij, and then you have a i j, uh, a, uh, sorry, a i m a j n t m n. Okay. Uh, and indeed, uh, um, uh, 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 we, we call them tensors. And we say that the, look at the indices, the number number of uh, indices that you have it, and that tells uh, tells us what is the rank of the tensor of the tensor. Um, well, and we, we had a lot of examples how the tensors are uh, calculated. We look into the product of them and uh, we look at the contraction of them. So how, the let's say, you can reduce, and I made an example of, uh, you know, dr dot the name. And I say that this is the kind of contraction which reduces the space uh, by uh, uh, by two values. Uh, well, uh, and and uh, if I'm not wrong, the, the the last part in the place that we stop was about the pseudo tensors and pseudo vectors and etc. So, well, remember when we talk about the vectors and tensors, all of those which they were cosine uh, uh, angles, indeed, uh, they were referred to. to the way that you can connect, one may connect the two coordinates. 
one was rotated one. For example, that was the fixed coordinate that we call it the coordinate of X1, X2. And then we had another coordinate which was rotated one was uh, X prime one and X prime two, okay? And we say, well, it can be in the three dimensional one. You can have X three and X prime three. And we say, well, uh, those AIs, they are related to the angles that you have it, this angle or that angle, or for example, this angle uh, or the other one angle. Okay, so those are related to, to each other. Uh, however, we have several, I mean, we call these, uh, as, as you remember, we say that it, of course, the vector is given in the space and this is the vector of A. And we say, well, the vector of A can have two representation. It can be written as, uh, um, I'm, I'm writing without paying attention to the indices, by the way. I will write it as A1, X1, plus A2, X2, plus A3, X3. Um, guys, I, I'm not writing the quadrant or contravariate. I'm not paying attention. So it's a Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate. Okay. So uh, as we discuss uh, uh, we, uh, in the Cartesian coordinates, they are the same. And in the rotated coordinate, again, that's the same. Is a prime r, a prime one, x prime one, from a a prime two, x prime two, and a prime three, x prime three. Okay, and we we call this kind of rotation when the coordinate is rotated and the vector is fixed in the space, we call it passive rotation, okay? We have another kind of rotation, which I call we call it uh, active rotation, which indeed what you do, the coordinate is fixed, okay? X1 and X2, they are fixed. But what we do, we take the vector of A and we rotate it uh, uh, to another place, which is A prime. And the rotation angle is about, let's say, alpha. We call these the uh, uh, active rotation, okay? This active rotation that we have. Is that clear? Professor? Yes. We have only one question. Yes. Recently, I, ha I heard from someone saying that vectors and scalar are the special case of the tensor. Is that correct? Yes, this is actually what I say during the last lecture as well. So I say that the Vector are the tensor of rank one, because if you look at the scalar, okay, that's a scalar which was a temperature or I don't know, the function of phi. How many indices do you have? Zero index. And I call it tensor of rank zero. And we say the vector of AI, how many index do you have? One is one index, and then I call it tensor of rank one and etc. So you have a tensor of rank two, rank three. Eh? And uh, remember, I, I say that everything is not in the world uh, defined based on uh, scale, being scalar, vector, or tensor. For example, we have spinors, which they are none, okay? So we have another kind of rotation, which we call it Improper rotation. Per improper rotation, which what we do in the improper rotation, we look at the uh, um, either inverse or the mirror image, uh, mirror of the coordinate of the coordinates. For example, if you have one coordinate of X1 and X2. Now, if if I do the uh, let's say the improper rotation of the coordinate, so again it's a kind of passive rotation. 
you are changing the coordinate, not, not the vector. And what happens indeed in this kind of rotation, x1 becomes minus x1, which is x prime one, and x2 becomes minus x prime, uh, 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 minus x2, okay? Which we call it x prime two. Is that clear? So we call these improper rotation. What we do here, indeed x1 and x2, they become x prime one and x prime two, which indeed they are minus x1 and minus x2. So you you in, you uh, invert all of the all of the degrees. No, oh, no, not necessarily supra. Uh, well, you can do the the boost essentially, but uh, uh, in uh, I'm just paying attention not to the displacement of the coordinate, but I'm paying attention to rotation. So let's go with the rotation. Okay. So uh, this is the improper rotation, and let's look at some some uh, uh, vectors and see. Uh, what we will get. For example, assuming that I have displacement vector, which is R, which is given by, uh, uh, by X, X hat plus Y, Y hat plus Z, Z hat, okay? Now the question that I have for you, what happens to this vector under Pro, improper, improper rotation. Can you write the result in the Q&A? What happens when I change X to minus X, Y to minus Y, Z to minus Z? That's, you know, that's uh, improper rotation, which is essentially I'm looking at the, at the inverse of it. So exactly, I will get minus R, okay? Yes, mirroring. No, no, I'm not changing. I'm not changing only. I'm not looking at the mirror, but I'm, you know, I'm transferring X to minus X, Y to minus Y, Z to minus Z. I'm inverting with respect to origin, Muhammad. You are right. If you do it on the mirror, then it will be only one component will be inverted. But do you agree on the origin? That will be the result. Uh, no, Shaho, that's that's not correct. Because if you, uh, <laughs> I, I will tell you in a minute. Okay, so if you do this kind of transformation, which you uh, uh, which you do the rotation in this way. Uh, then that will be the results, okay? Some people, they're asking if this is not 180 degrees rotation. Well, that's 180 degrees rotation for sure, but uh, uh, wait for, for an example, which I will provide it, because I'm looking at the Z, which also Z is changed to minus Z. If Z is changing to minus Z, then uh, that's not anymore the right angle, okay? It will it will not be uh, it will not be right-handed. It will be left-handed. So let's let's uh, just once forever let's resolve the problem. So you see it in the in the two D plane, but let's go with the uh, with the Cartesian plane, okay? Uh, X. Let's go this way. X one, X two, and X three. What I'm saying that now change these coordinates to x1 becomes minus x1, okay? That will be the new x1, x2 becomes this, x prime two, and x3 becomes minus x3, which is x prime three. And if you look at this, this is the right-handed, this is the right-handed, 
coordinate because if you go with x1 cross x2, you will get x3 in this way. But if you look at this one, if you go with x1 cross x prime one cross x prime two, the direction for x prime two should be this one, but it is not. It's the inverted one. So that's a left-handed. Okay, so it's not simply a rotation. That's the reason that we call it improper rotation. The right-handed becomes left-handed. Is that clear? So some people, they wrote that is a, is a rotation of 180 degrees. Okay, perfect moving. Lovely. So remember, under this improper rotation, uh, the vector of R, which is the coordinate vector, becomes minus R. Any vector of A becomes minus A. Okay? We call this any vector. But is that true? Any vector acts like this? Under this transformation becomes minus that vector. Let me give you an example. Look at the uh, angular momentum L, which is R cross P. Okay. Look at the improper rotation. Apply improper rotation. What does it mean? R becomes minus R and P becomes minus P. Professor? Yes. Moving said that. How about cross products? Oh, yes. These, these what I'm going to write. These are cross product. So, well, uh, uh, R, we just, we just look at the R, that how this is changing. And P is MV or MDRDT. So, uh, M is a scalar. DRDT will act exactly in the same way. That's the reason that P also times minus p. But look at the value of this. So r becomes minus r and p becomes minus p. So the result of these will be plus because minus multiplied by minus will be plus r cross p. And you will see that angular momentum, angular momentum under improper rotation becomes invariant. So it's the same. So angular momentum momentum is not, or let's say, does not follow the rule. So we call these kind of vectors pseudo vector. Sorry, because they have the property upon the, the change in the coordinate they have exactly similar property, but under the improper rotation, uh, 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 they, uh, they are invariant. So if you change, if you change the coordinate, if you look at the uh, uh, mirror images, if you want to look at, uh, look at it in this way, R becomes minus R and, and uh, P becomes minus P, you will see the direction of angular momentum invariant. So it's the same value. Or uh, let's say the same orientation. So that we call them pseudo vector. I remember that one of the students asked me what happens. Oh, I think the student asked, do we have pseudo uh, scalar? That was the question that they had. So I'm asking what is happening with the LZ value? What is LZ is Z dot L, which is Z dot uh, R cross P. And of course, this is a, a pseudo vector. And that's a vector. But if you look at the LZ, LZ under improper, improper rotation, becomes minus LZ. 
So we have a scalar quantity, which this scalar quantity, if you change R to minus R, P to minus P, and Z to minus Z, it becomes minus value. Well, the scalar quantity should be the same. Next year one, and uh, no, 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 we, I didn't say is the translation. This is an improper rotation, okay? Angular momentum is not invariant uh, under the space translation. If you do the translation, you know that R also becomes an R of capital plus R, which is the R is the displacement. Then you have the extrinsic property and intrinsic property of angular momentum. I, I'm not talking about that. I'm telling you that angular momentum, if you flip the coordinate because from right-handed to left-handed, then you will see the angular momentum is, is not changed, is not following the vector formalism, okay? In, in that language, because in, if it's a kind of, let's say uh, the vectors uh, notation that we do have, it becomes, it should become negative, but it does not become negative value, okay? And we call these kind of uh, vectors, we call them pseudo vectors. And it's not only the proper of angular momentum is a proper, uh, proper uh, property of any cross product, okay? So any cross product, for example, A cross B, they are pseudo, uh, 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 pseudo vector. Even we say that a cross B dot C, which is, we are, I mean, we discuss about it. We call it a scalar quantity. That's the result is a scalar quantity. But even this is not a scalar quantity. This is a pseudo scalar. Why it is a pseudo scalar? Because if you change A to minus A, B to minus B, we, because that's the way that it, uh, uh, the coordinate is changed. Uh, dot minus C, the result of this will be minus A cross B cross C. So under the, 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 uh, the coordinate from left hand, uh, right handed becomes left handed. If you do this rotation, uh, uh, which is improper rotation, that, uh, that scalar quantity uh, is not uh, uh, is not fixed. Another question: pseudo vector property is not a property of vector, but rather the property of t vector cross product only. Is not the property of the t vector? I don't have a t vector cross product. No, no, no. It's not only the property of the cross product. We, we have, we have uh, as I say, that we have some, some vectors that they act like this, okay? I, I, can, I can define them in, uh, with Levichita notation, Levichita notation, and I can define pseudo vectors. Not necessary that you will have it uh, in this way. But I'm, I'm giving an example of uh, previous vectors that we defined. Is that all, or, or there are still some questions? Yeah. Okay. The same, the same way it happens that we can have pseudo tensors. So, for example, you may have a tensor of Tijk, and you flip the coordinate, which means that you change xi to be minus x i uh, under improper rotation. And then you will see that this tensor is acting differently. Is not following the improper rotation. Then we call them pseudo tensor. One of those is epsilon ijk, which is a pseudo tensor.
is a tensor of rank three, but is a pseudo tensor. You can you can look at the look at the, the value. And by the way, these uh, epsilon i j k, which last time I wrote the element, uh, also uh, they are isotropic. So means that uh, if you uh, if you rotate it, you will see it in identical in different coordinates. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, I, I I think I, I looked into all of the all of the uh, derivatives and also all of the definitions that we had previously. So we looked into the uh, direct product, and I think uh, we built up a uh, uh, we built up um, uh, tensors, and also we looked into a uh, definition of the gradient of a vector, if I'm not mistaken. And the last thing that is uh, uh, is uh, remaining, and it's a little bit important uh, to to know, uh, if you recall, last time we say that well, you can take two vectors of a i, and for example, uh, b j or b i or b j. You can look at the a i b j, and we say that it has two indices, and I call them t i j, and that was a contravariant. Contravariant uh, uh, tensor of rank two. Okay, uh, and also we look into the and and, and I, I, of course I say that also these we call it a direct uh, product. You can have a vector a i which is a contravariant and another vector of b j, and again you can make the product of these two. And you will get Tij, and that was a mixed tensor of rank two. And we say also you can look at uh, Ai, Bi, and this was the summation or the dummy index, and the result of that was a scalar quantity, and that was the definition of A dot B, if you recall, and we show that this is. This is invariant under transformation of coordinates. Okay. Okay. We have some questions. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, first of all, how can you, how one can check Levi Civita as PZU tensor? Yeah, that was a homework. I just gave it to you. Okay, another question. And uh, by the way, when I, this is this is proven in your book, that's that's the reason that I gave it as a homework that you can look into that. Another question: We know that tensors, including vectors, are important in physics because the physics must must be independent of the coordinate system, but in improper rotation, our objects change. That's why we call them PCD. Am I right? Yes, that is properly stated. Very well stated. Yes, Shaho. Yeah, if physics is independent of the cho uh, 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 the choice of the coordinate, and of course, I mean, remember that um, when you go deep down in physics, we have some sort of uh, transformation. We call it the parity. I didn't want to really name that parity because that's the definition that we are real, uh, working with. But sometimes you look at a, a physics as, as Shaho properly mentioned, and these physics should be invariant on the, let's say, uh, uh, time and the parity uh, symmetry. So if you, if you change the time to minus t, if you change the coordinate x, y, z to minus x, minus y, minus z, that should be the same. So uh, it's in the physics, as Xiaohong mentioned, is independent of the choice of your coordinate to be right-handed or to be left-handed. Yes, Xiaohong, thank you very much for, for these statements. Okay, so uh, going back to, to the tensor, so I can, you know, I can build up tensors from two vectors and this, these are the ways. So you can take the covariants, you will get the covariant tensors of rank two or even rank three if you go with three vectors of 
ABC, or you can get a mixed one when you go with a quariant and contravariant uh, 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 language, or you can take one quariant and one contravariant, and then you do uh, the summation. And uh, if you repeat on the dummy indices, and then uh, what you will get as a result, you will get a scalar quantity. And we show last time also, this is invariant on the, 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 the rotation of the coordinate. So now, uh, well, we work with, with, uh, with the summation of tensors. We looked uh, into, uh, uh, we looked into uh, um, uh, subtraction of the tensors. We looked into the direct product of tensors. We looked into contractions of the tensor. This is one of the examples of the contractions, by the way, uh, of uh, tensors. In this case, uh, uh, there are two vectors, okay? And now the, 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 how can, the, the, there is another question, how can we divide tensors? Let's say, what is the result of AI, let's say, or uh, a, a, um, um, yeah, let's go with, with something which is a, a convention notation. Let's say BI divided by AJ. What would be the result of this, okay? So instead of uh, dividing them together, I will call this a K. And then, of course, there will be some indices, which I have to look into that. Then I would say that BI is this K multiplied by IJ. So that has one index, that one has a one index. So definitely the summation will be on this index because the other side is independent of the, the uh, that index. So it will be KI. J, A, J, okay? So that will be the results, results of dividing two vectors. Can you tell me what is that? Is a scalar quantity or it is something else? But is this K, I, J? A mixed tensor, right? So indeed, well, uh, if I can look at this notation, definitely I will say that the result of these will be K, I, and J. And the result of these will be a tensor, a mixed tensor of rank two. And the same situation, I can take, for example, um, um, any any others, for example, I can go with, uh, 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 let's say, K, I, J, L, M, A, L, M, the result of these will be B, uh, I, J. So, uh, the uh, dividing this tensor, uh, this tensor by that one, will be a tensor of rank four, which is a mixed tensor. Or, uh, or B I J will be K I J L M A L M. So that will be uh, dividing a tensor, uh, a contravariant tensor of rank two with a covariant tensor of uh, rank two. The result of this will be a contravariant uh, tensor of uh, rank four. So this is the way that uh, that uh, that we look into uh, into linking the two vectors together, and uh, well, that can be linked with with a tensor, uh, which not necessarily is given by the summation of the two indices, which in these cases they are uh, 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 they are they are a tensor of rank four. But it can be also the tensor of rank two. It can be a tensor of rank three, depending on uh, uh, how many indices uh, this tensor may have. So uh, Isa is saying is saying that does AI divided by BJ have any physical interpretation? I would say yes. Uh, you will see it in a minute. Uh, I will explain it to you. The Subra is asking the mixed tensor of uh, second rank you have written as multiplication of the contravariant and the covariant vectors. 
which looks like a scalar product, then can it be concluded that the mixed tensor of second rank is a scalar? No, 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 that's, that's not true. That's a just, I mean, maybe you feel it by the coincidence, but this is not a scalar quantity, is a, a mixed tensor of rank two. And I, I gave this example. So it's, you're linking a contravariant with a covariant uh, tensor of rank two, and then the result of this will be a tensor of rank four. So uh, let's go with, with the physical meaning of that. And by the way, it, it, I can prove, uh, indeed, I can prove that these Ks are, or that one, they are the tensors. All of these, they are tensors. Okay, and the, the way that you prove that they are tensors is by looking at the coordinate transformation. Which one do you want me to prove? For example, I can prove the first one, and just for simplicity, we say that the bi is equal to a kij uh, aj. So uh, uh, let's look at the um, coordinate transformation or coordinate rotation, the result of these will be a B prime I, and the result of the other one will be K I J, uh, A prime J, okay? And that's in the rotated coordinate. So uh, B prime is, uh, B prime I is linked to A I L, um, BL and the other side, for example, that one will be KIJ, which I have no idea what it will be the result of this. That will be linked to uh, that will be linked to uh, uh, A prime and A prime indeed A prime J is linked to AJ. Um, I can go with another index, uh, uh, will be AJL, M, A, M. That, that will be the result. And then what I can do, I can bring them to the other side. And uh, when, when you do that, it will be A, I, L, B, L, minus K prime I, J, a, J, M, A, M equal to zero. Then instead of B, L, I can replace it with K, I, J, A, J, and K, I, L, uh, A, J. And then you will have A, I, L, K, L, M, L, J, minus K, uh, that's the J, I will go with I, the other index, I will change it to, to N, A, N, and the index of M, I will change it to J because I want to factor it out and it will be A, J equal to zero. And uh, it means that that is equal to zero, and that has a, a prime index. And uh, I will get A, I, L, K, L, J is equal to K, I, N, A, N, J. And then I can use the orthogonality of that. And then I will get K, I, N prime is equal to uh, A, I, L. And then I have uh, A, N M K uh, that is L and that one will be M. I use the orthogonality nullity here. And then you will see that these uh, uh, indeed the KLM is a tensor of rank two and is not a scalar as one of the students uh, they, they ask. So uh, so far, so good. Is there any question? If not, then we will go with um, uh, um, 
with one example that uh, one of the students was asking that uh, uh, where this is playing role. I mean, how can we divide it to vectors and, and getting the, the result? No, there's no any question. Okay, lovely. So, so uh, are you, perfect. So uh, uh, one, one of the students asked what is happening with with, uh, with the physical meaning of dividing two vectors of, let's say, um, I don't know, but, um, I'm making an example of, uh, let's go with the name, with the proper name, P I divided by E J. P is the polarization, electric field polarization, and E J is the electric field. So, um, just to tell you what I'm, um, uh, what I mean by that, assuming that you have um, atoms, right? And these atoms, if they are neutral, uh, well, yes, uh, Muhammad, this is one of the example. I don't want to go with an easy, easy one, but uh, let's go with with an example. I have atoms, which means that the positive and negative charges, and these are uh, the neutral atoms, so it means that these positive and negative charges, I mean, uh, the cloud of electrons and the central mass of the cloud of electrons and the nucleus, they are the same. So uh, you will have uh, uh, no displacement for charges, for charges, okay? However, as soon as you apply electric field here, if you apply electric field here, what happens? This charge which was symmetric perfectly, now it changes in this way. The cloud of electrons will be, will be shifted towards this direction, so that's a negative charge. And the positive charge, which is the, the nucleus, is trying to escape, so it goes to the other side, okay? You distort the symmetric uh, situation that you have it. And by the way, the shelves that I consider is a S shell. So it's an it's a easy, easy uh, example. So as a consequence of that, the center of mass for the charge, negative charge is here. The center of mass for the positive charge is here. And there is a small displacement between the two. Okay. And as Muhammad mentioned, a dipole is created here. I call it P. Is that clear? Good. So as a consequence of applying electric field to a material, what happens? Dipole moments are created. means that if you have a material, this material will get polarized, polarized. And now I'm asking myself, what is happening with the polarization if you divide it by the electric field? Do you expect to be a constant or not? That is my question, and that's the reason that I have written in this way. So the polarization, as we agreed, is a vector, is a PI. And electric field, as we have seen here, also is given by EJ. So Mehdi says that, well, this is a constant quantity, and that was a question that I asked. In general, that's not a constant quantity. It is given by a tensor. And this tensor, indeed, I call it uh, chi i j, sorry, i j. Not necessary that you apply the electric field along x direction. So assuming that is your coordinate, x 
y and z and this is your material that you have it here and now it may happen that you apply electric field along x direction but your material will get polarized along let's say y direction that is a one possibility it may get polarized along z direction so indeed this chi ij is a second rank tensor so that was uh, an example and indeed i mean uh, you can see it in the laboratory that well, we have materials which they have this chi ij which is not a scalar quantity but is a tensor of rank two and uh, and even uh, 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 yes it's it is a tensor even um, you can look at the nonlinear property of the material and you will get to higher order nonlinearity and higher order nonlinearity they have uh, a higher order tensors they have chi i j k chi i j k l so that is what we call it is e j e k is a second nonlinearity the or second order nonlinearity and then we have e j e k and EL, that's a third order nonlinearity in the material. So this is the way that the material responses to, to, uh, to, uh, to electric field, external electric field. So this is one of the example of having uh, a tensor. The other one, do you remember that um, uh, if you look at the angular momentum, angular momentum was related to angular frequency, right? And the coefficient of that was I. And we say, well, for simplicity, I is a scalar quantity, but in general, this is wrong because that is Li divided by omega j, that can be I, I, j. So I indeed, I, j is a tensor of rank two. Not necessarily is diagonalized, but you can find coordinates which the IJ, which is the momentum of inertia, is 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 diagonalized. Okay, so is there any question before going to the other topic? We only have one question. Mm -hmm. Are contravariant and covariant vectors representing same quantity, just like the moment momentum? have different physical meaning yes uh, they have uh, different physical meanings and I, I will show in uh, in in the next uh, in next subject another question if p and e both are convariant vectors then backslash shi should be scalar uh, not necessary not necessary it can be a mixed tensor Another question from Shania. Lij is a PCD tensor? Uh, it's not L, it's I. I, I, I j is, is not a pseudo tensor. Uh, well, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, it's not a pseudo tensor. It's not a pseudo, it's, it's a tensor of rank two. Because L is a pseudo tensor and omega also is a pseudo tensor by itself. Another question in Arafkin at the end of page five, this uh, return, the vector division is not defined. Is it because at the point of the book, tensors are not presented? Well, at that part where the tensor was not, uh, was not presented, yeah. At the beginning, did I talk about the tensor? No, <laughs> you have to be prepared for the tensor calculation. It gets more complicated. It's more okay. getting more That's complicated. Okay. Good. Well, now uh, I will go with with a more general description that now that you are familiar with the concept of the tensor. And remember, tensor in the second rank tensor is very. I would say that is an easy way of understanding. Uh, there is a physical meaning with that. 
And, and the meaning is, if you have a tensor of rank two, I'm talking about rank two, just our second rank tensor. If you have a tensor uh, of T multiplying by our dot product of a vector of um, A, then you will get a vector of B. Okay? So indeed, the tensor of rank two with the dot product, it, it sounds like doing a kind of projections. For example, I can write a tensor which these tensors uh, in the dadic form, which is uh, which how to keep the two uh, uh, um, uh, vectors together. For example, I can write x hat x hat in the Cartesian coordinate. By the way, I'm writing in the Cartesian coordinate, just to having a feeling. Cartesian coordinates uh, x x together, uh, x y together, x z together. I can sum them up together, right? And remember. If I write it in this way, I have to be very careful that the uh, 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 the way that X and Y, they are selected and they are put together is very important. I am not allowed to change them together, okay? I am not allowed, this X hat, Y hat is different from Y hat, X hat is a kind of notation that I'm introducing. Uh, well, I, I'm receiving a lot of messages here and uh, and the Q and A from someone which is uh, which has no name and is really interrupting. So he's asking questions going back to the first lecture or third lecture. At least change your name that we know that you are a real person. Uh, sorry, guys. So. Um, um, I, I, I will introduce a new kind of, let's say, notation, which is x, x hat, as I say, x, y hat, and uh, x, z hat. Uh, and as I say, that is very, very important to know that uh, this x, y is different from y, x, and this one also is different from z, x hat. And uh, well, I can build up an, uh, a, a very, very exactly, they are not commuting uh, 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 notations. I can build up a very, very complicated notation, which I have. So I can write, for example, a uh, x, x, x hat, x hat, a x, y, x hat, y hat, a x, z, X hat, Z hat, and etc. Plus a Y X, Y hat, X hat. Remember, this is different from that one. Plus a Y Y, Y hat, Y hat, plus a Y Z, Y hat, Z hat. And finally, I can write the last one, which is a z x z hat x hat plus a z y, which is z hat y hat plus a z z z hat z hat. This is an example of second rank tensor. We call it dyadic as well. So it's a kind of notation that you can you keep two vectors together, but the uh, the sequence of vectors are very important for you. So which one is coming first, which one is coming second? And as, as mentioned by one of the students, these are non-commuting uh, uh, vectors. Now, uh, well, uh, I will tell one example. Let's consider a x x x hat. This is one of those vectors, uh, those tensors. Assuming that I have 
AX, X, X hat, X hat. And what I will do, I will do a dot product with a vector, vector B. What it will be the result of this? Vector B has B1, X1, X, B2, Y, B3, Z, okay? And if you do the dot product, the result of this will be A, X, 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 X dot the rest that you have, which is X hat plus Y hat plus Z hat with, uh, with the coefficient of B1, B2, and B3. And then the first vector here will be, uh, uh, will be associated to on the, uh, uh, on the other side. So the result of this will be X hat, the first part will remain the same. And then the result of other part will be B1 X dot X hat plus B2 X dot Y hat and plus B3 X dot Z hat, okay? And, X dot X that is one, this one is zero, this one is zero. So the result of this will be A X X X hat times B one. So indeed, this kind of notation allows you to determine a, a tensor, which the dot product with a vector brings you as a projection on a specific vector of let's say X hat. So what it does indeed, if you take a B vector and if you use a X, X, X hat, X hat uh, with a dot product, then it provides the projection in the direction of X. So this is the way that someone can take a vector and bring in to another vector, okay? That's the way that I say to you that you can take uh, uh, the vector of electric field and mapping it on the vector of the polarization or taking the vector of angular velocity and bringing it to the vector of uh, uh, um, uh, angular momentum. This is the way that you can do the transformation of one vector to another vector. And well, this is really, really important. And people also, they extend this concept to a general formalism that they call them by vector. And by vector will be discussed in the next lecture in the, con in the context of the, uh, in the um, one form and two forms, but I, I will discuss it in that context. And it's very, very important to simplify equations. So from knowing these, let's say, calculation and knowing the concept of the tensor, because I know that some of you, you may have difficulties of understanding the, the physical concept of the tensor, uh, but there are many things in, in our physical world that they are not vector, they are not scalar, but they are tensors. Uh, or, uh, for example, they can be spinors, which I did not discuss about it. It's going back to the group theory that uh, we may have a chance maybe in uh, uh, discussing that in, in one week. So now going to, uh, to a general formalism, why I, I would like to discuss about this language of the tensors, because it allows us to do any calculation of uh, derivatives in a very, very smart and elegant way. So let's restrict ourselves to metric, uh, metric space again. And this metric space or Riemannian space, uh, uh, it's very important to 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 find a metric, and from the metric we can we can do all of those calculations easily. So assuming that I'm working with a with a contravariant variable of QI is one of the examples that I have. These contravariables they can be um, x, y, and z is one of the examples. They can be uh, rho phi and z. They can be r phi and z. Or, uh, sorry, r phi and theta, or theta and phi. Let's go with, with the other way. Or 
or we can have the elliptical coordinates u and v and z so those are the coordinate or coordinates parameters it can be any of those associated to these coordinate parameters always uh, uh, remember the coordinate parameters they may not have the same dimension for example dimension of x is the dimension of y is the dimension of z which is equal to meter right but dimension of rho is meter but dimension of phi is one it has no dimension and dimension of z is equal to length dimension of rho or r is equal to length but theta has no dimension phi also has no dimension Okay, U, V, and Z also they have the dimension of uh, of one uh, L. Okay, so remember this Q I, which is the contravariant variable, they have no, they may have dimension or they may not have a dimension. It's up to you. And from this uh, Q I, I can determine or I can find. Epsilon i, which are the covariant vectors. How can we find this? Do you remember that I say that what is the dqi? dqi, because, uh, 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 sorry. We had a coordinate of r. And these R was a was a function of a QI, and then we take we took the derivative, and we say that dr is equal to derivative of R with respect to QI, and then we had the QI. Okay, is that clear? And we call these uh, that was a chain rule. Okay, fantastic, and we we call these epsilon i and we say that epsilon i which is we determine it as a derivative of r with respect to qi and if you remember i say the last time the uh, uh, it's not necessary normalized and we made an example and the example was was in the cartier in a cylindrical coordinate and we calculate what is going on with rho hat which is going on with the theta hat or in the uh, and z hat as well and we did the calculation and we find that uh, er is normalized because it, if you look at the norm of this it was one but e5 was not normalized e5 was a rho phi hat okay uh, I'm, I'm sure that if you look at the previous notes, you will see that. So the same way I can I can introduce what we call it uh, associated to the coordinate parameters, which is a, co a contravariant parameters. That's a contravariant parameters. I can have the quariant vectors, which is this one. Okay. So in this example that I had, the infinity small displacement of R, which is was the, the displacement vector, was given or is given by epsilon i dqi. Remember, that's a summation over dummy index i. Good. So any vector that I may have any vector of A can be written as epsilon i ai. And remember, this is a contravariant vector. Questions? No, professor. There is no any questions. Lovely. And remember, when again, any time that you are coming to this vector formalism, Pay attention to the rotation. So always we are dealing with the rotation. So you have a coordinate, which is a Q1, Q2, Q3. 
and not necessary. Remember these, uh, as I say that these epsilon i, they are not normalized. E i, they were normalized. Normalized, okay? So here you may have, um, I don't know, in any spaces here, um, sorry, any places here, you have E1, for example, E2 and E3. Remember they are right angle, uh, uh, but if you change the space and if you look at the different points, for example, here that can be, uh, um, sorry, or for example, here that can be E1, here that can be E2, and E3 is orthogonal to them. So any places, E1, E2, and E3, they are different. So it means that epsilon i indeed is a function of qj. So is a function of q1, q2, and q3. And we had an example. So rho hat was a function of theta hat. And uh, theta hat was a function of rho and phi. Z hat was constant in the cylindrical coordinate. So remember that all of those, they are really, really important that you pay attention to the fundamental there, okay? So if I have any vectors in that space, either this vector, uh, let's say this is my vector here, vector of A, I can write this vector of A is the, in the, in the uh, contravariant component. So I can write it as a epsilon I, a i, or I can write it in the quariant uh, component that will be a i epsilon i. This is the quariant components, and that one is a contravariant components. This is, oh, sorry. These two, one of them is a covariant basis, and the other one is a contravariant basis. I will mathematically prove that the, the same vector can be written in either covariant formalism or in contravariant formalism. I, well, I have to be careful what I mean by covariant or contravariant. I mean only the components not the, the basis, okay? So let's go back, let's go back to, uh, 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 um, uh, to my notation. So remember that the, uh, A can be written as uh, AI epsilon I, or it can be written as AI epsilon I, that's R. And again, note that epsilon I or epsilon I, they are not normalized, normalized. What is normalized? EI and EI are normalized, which I have not talked about that. And both of them, they are function of the coordinates, so they can change easily in, in space. So look at the DR. So we had the DR, which is epsilon i dqi in terms of the contravariant uh, parameters that we have. So now look at the dr dot dr. So remember that is, is a dummy index of i, which is epsilon i dqi. And here dr dot dr, that will be means uh, then I have uh, uh, the, the two summations, so it will be epsilon i dqi dot epsilon j dqj. So uh, I have to the two summations. So I will do the contractions. I'm, I'm reducing the space. 
So that will be the, the result of this will be epsilon i dot epsilon j dqi dqj, because the dot product is determined between the two vectors that I have, which is epsilon i and epsilon j. So, uh, and of course that will be, since epsilon uh, i and epsilon j, they are function of the parameters, they are function of q1, q2, and q3, look at these notation. So in indeed, that is a, is, a, is a function of QI, Q1, Q2, and Q3, and they are depending on the two index of I and J, so I would call them GIJ, or we call them the metric of the space. Or if I want to be careful, so, so since the indices they are in the uh, subscript, I call them the covariant metric. So dr that dr, which is the length that I have is dr square is given by gij dqi dqj, which gij, I define it as a epsilon i dot epsilon j. What are those? They are uh, uh, the, the, uh, the vectors, not normalized necessary vectors when qi is changed. Okay. And the epsilon j is the r vector when a vector, position vector when qj is changed. Lovely. Okay, questions so far? So GIJ, as we say, that is given by the dot product of the two uh, 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 basis vectors, so which is epsilon one, epsilon two, and epsilon three. Uh, is, uh, well, be, be careful, uh, Isa, I'm not talking about the Q. I think you meant uh, epsilon, right? Because Qs are parameter. Epsilon, they are uh, 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 um, epsilons are are uh, 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 vectors. Okay, epsilon i are the basis, which I say that they are the uh, covariant basis, and the Qi are the um, QI are the parameters. Okay, did, did I answer to your question? And now when it comes back, uh, uh, yes, epsilon, perfect. So epsilon I, uh, which means that we have epsilon one, epsilon two and epsilon three, not necessary they are orthogonal. I mean, there is no condition they are orthogonal. They are not, the, the orthogonality is not needed. There is no need to be orthogonal. We had no condition on that. So we just expanded them. Is that good? However, if you say that if they are orthogonal, means that gij, uh, uh, when i is not equal to j, that is equal to zero. So there are some coordinates which they are not orthogonal coordinates. And I made an example last time, uh, way back. I mean, maybe it was four or five lectures ago when I say that look at the way that people, they built up the, uh, the building blocks for for a crystal, if you have a crystal, you have a new unit vectors there. So you have A, B, and C, not necessarily those unit vectors that are orthogonal to each other. You can build up orthogonal vectors, but you can uh, you can do any transformation in the lattice, just having these, uh, these vector of A, B, and C, which they are not orthogonal. And then you need to have these uh, co uh, covariant and contravariant formalism 
to determine what is going on with the volume, what is going on with the surface, what is happening with the divergence or Lagrangian or anything in, in that specific coordinate. Good. So in, indeed, now I have dr squared, which is a scalar is given by gij, dqi, dqj. Lovely. And remember that gij was epsilon i dot epsilon j. And those, remember, they are, uh, 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 they are um, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the quariant basis that we are dealing with. Well, I can take the gij, which they are the metric, is the quariant metric. And I can multiply it by another vector of uh, another uh, um, another metric of G J K, and I will get delta of I K. And do you remember we discussed about the delta of I K, which is the Kronecker delta, mixed Kronecker delta, which was isotropic, isotropic uh, uh, metric or isotropic tensor of rank two, of uh, uh, rank two tensor. Okay, so what I have done, I have taken the, the metric that I have, which was, was a covariant metric, and I uh, produced it. I did a, 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 a product with a, with a contravariant, contravariant metric. And then I have done a contractions on J. And the result of these will be delta IK, right? Uh, what I'm doing, actually, I'm looking at the inverse of that matrix, essentially, or that sensor. So the, uh, uh, then uh, easily I can find G, J, K, which is the contravariant metric. Okay. Which indeed... By the way, it's uh, is the inverse of the uh, inverse of the of the of the, of the metric that I'm looking for. So now is the time to uh, to prove that, for example, if you have a vector of a, which you can write it as a a i epsilon i, you can write it in um, um, a contravariant contravariant components then we can write it as a ai for example delta of i k epsilon k what is happening with that the result of this result of this is epsilon i because if you sum over the dummy index of k the result of this will be epsilon k epsilon i i I'm, i think you agree with me and now instead of the delta, I will write the result that I have it here. So I will expand it in terms of the metric. So the result of this will be AI. And instead of delta IK, I will write as a GIJ, GJK. Then I have the epsilon of K. So, and uh, then let's cast it together. It will be AI. G I J, and then I have a G J K, epsilon K. Knowing that the G is a tensor, what would be the result of that? Can you write it in the in the Q and A? G J K epsilon K. I'm summing over the index of K. What will be the result? Is F G or it should be epsilon? it will be epsilon, it will be epsilon of J. And what happens with the first one? It will be G I J A I. What will be the result? Can you type in Q and A? Exactly. The result of these will be a J uh, index. So, then 
Using the metric, I, I just showed to you that the result of this will be AJ epsilon J, which epsilon J is the contravariant uh, basis vector. AJ is the covariant components. So uh, the metric allows you to move from contravariant to covariant and vice versa. And uh, uh, it, it's very important to use these relationships. So, um, and, and, and looking at the co components that we had, so, I mean, I, I, can, I can look at the metric again, I can do the calculation again. So everything, it, it seems that very, very clear for, for us. So, uh, um, um, uh, and remember again, that uh, we, we started from this point that epsilon, um, uh, epsilon I was derivative of R, with respect to a Q uh, I, uh, which was the derivative with respect to uh, respect to the contravariant parameter, and in a similar fashion, you can prove that epsilon J is derivative of Q J respect to R. Okay. Okay, so uh, which which brings me to the to the point that last time that we had that epsilon i that epsilon j, the result of this was uh, was q i, uh, derivative of uh, of uh, x, and derivative of x with respect to q j, and the derivative of q i, respect to y derivative of y with respect to qj and plus uh, derivative of uh, qi derivative with respect to z of derivative of z with respect to qj. Okay. Is there any question before going uh -huh. to... Yes, Professor, we have an equation from Subra. Mm -hmm. uh, ask, uh, does the order of multiplication matter? No. I mean, when you take a construction of matrix and vector? No, no not at all. Not at all. No. Okay, thank you. Good. So now let's look at an example. So I say that uh, the QI or QJ, for example, uh, that can be Cartesian co in spherical coordinate or Cartesian coordinate. For example, let's go with uh, a spherical coordinate, which is R, theta, and phi. Those are my contravariant parameters that I have right now. Let's uh, uh, build up, let us find the metric, the metric for this space, for this space. So I will write R, which is R cosine of theta. Sorry, is R sine of theta cosine of phi x hat plus R sine of theta sine of phi y hat plus R cosine of theta z hat. And now, when I have R, I, I want to build up epsilon I. How do you build up epsilon I? Is the derivative of R with respect to QI. Remember, again, epsilon I, they are not normalized. So I want to build up epsilon R. I have to take R, and I have to take the derivative with respect to R. The result of this will be sine of theta, cosine of phi x hat, sine of theta, sine of phi y hat, plus r, uh, sorry, plus cosine of theta z hat. 
And what is going on with epsilon of uh, uh, epsilon two, which epsilon two will be epsilon of theta, will be derivative of r with respect to theta now. That will be uh, derivative of sine of theta will be cos, uh, cosine of theta will be r cosine of theta uh, cosine of phi x hat uh, plus r cosine of theta sine of phi y hat and that will be minus r sine of theta z hat and epsilon z uh, sorry, epsilon phi will be derivative of r with respect to uh, phi. Remember, that is a epsilon 1, that is epsilon 2, and that's a epsilon 3 that we are dealing with. And the result of this will be a derivative of r with respect to phi, taking the uh, derivative of r which is with respect to phi. The result of this will be uh, derivative of cosine will be minus sine will be minus r sine of theta sine of phi of x hat derivative of this will be plus r sine of theta uh, derivative of uh, sine will be cosine of phi y hat and derivative of uh, last term with respect to phi will be equal to zero do you agree on that guys Okay, lovely. So I built up the epsilon one, epsilon two, and epsilon three. So I can do all of the calculation right now that I need. So uh, for curiosity, I'm asking you what is happening with the metric? What is the covariant metric? Metric. Covariant metric means that you need to work and find out gij, which is epsilon i that epsilon j. And this is the calculation. Epsilon i that epsilon j will be, uh, uh, it has nine components. So it has one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So, okay. So let's look at the epsilon one dot epsilon two. Epsilon one dot epsilon two. So that will be uh, r sine of theta cosine of phi cosine of theta cosine of phi plus r sine of theta sine of phi, cosine of theta, sine of phi, okay? Minus r, sine of theta, cosine of phi, cosine of theta. And uh, the result of these, if you take r, sine of theta, uh, cosine of phi factoring out, okay? That will be cosine square, of phi and sine square of phi will be one. So that will be r sine of theta cosine of phi. He could theta minus r sine of theta cosine of theta, which is equal to zero. So that term is zero, is symmetric. So the other one also is zero. This one is zero. This one also is zero. This one is zero. This one is zero. So the first term epsilon one, that epsilon one, the result is one. Epsilon two, that epsilon two will be r square. Epsilon three, that epsilon three, uh, let's do the calculation for epsilon three because it's funny. Epsilon three is uh, um, R square sine square of theta sine square of phi plus R square sine theta square cosine of phi square. So R square sine of theta square, you factor it out, you will get the sine of phi power of two plus cosine of phi power of two, which is equal to one. So it will be R two sine square of phi. Good. That was the uh, uh, covariant metric. Now I'm asking you what is happening with the contravariant metric. So G, I, J. 
So you can use the uh, the relationship that you had it with uh, uh, delta ij, and then the result of this will be one, one divided by r square, one divided by r square sine square of theta uh, of theta, which is essentially inverse of the metric of uh, ij, which we we just discussed. Good. Now, do you remember that we had QI, which was R, theta, and phi? Now I can ask you, what is a QI? What, what is the result of that? The result of this will be indeed is a GIJ, QJ. So the metric that we had, it will be, uh, 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 if you look at the component of that, will be G1, uh, J, and J, if you, are, you look for the Q1, and the uh, dummy index, you have to sum them up. The G1, 2, 1, 3, they are zero, so the result of these will be R. And the uh, uh, second component will be, uh, you set I to be equal to two, then two, one is zero, but two, two is R square, so that will be R square, and then you have theta. And finally, you have R square uh, sine square of theta and phi hat phi. So these are the uh, um, the, uh, the the covariant parameters associated to the co contravariant parameters of R theta and phi. Okay. Is there any question so far? Yes, uh, we have uh, a question. Uh, how can calculate the covariant vector e super uh, power i as uh, to factor e phi uh, dr uh, over d theta dr? It is possible to be calculated without finding the covariant uh, component is e sub k and the metric tensor. Uh, one can use the metric tensor to do the calculation, as this is exactly what I'm doing here. Yes, you can use the metric tensor to do the calculation. That's it? Yes, uh, that all question that we have for now. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so far, well, we, we know this, this is uh, what happens. If, if you know the metric, you can build up, uh, as I say, the the co moving from covariant to contravariant you can build up not only the parameters but also to the vectors so this was exactly the question of a uh, uh, one of the one of the person attending the the meeting is how to build up epsilon j right or epsilon let's call it i how do you find epsilon i for this coordinate so, because here we found epsilon one, epsilon two, and epsilon three. And if you look at the epsilon one, this is nothing more than r hat. If you look at the epsilon two, that is equal to r theta hat. And if you look at the epsilon three, this is r sine of theta phi hat. Okay? So, remember that well, for these parameters, that explicitly for these parameters, epsilon i was rho hat, uh, r hat, uh, r theta hat, and r sine of theta phi hat. Now, the question is that what is going on with epsilon i, which is the contravariant component of the basis? Okay, so an epsilon i that will be g i j epsilon j okay so since it's diagonalized automatically i can write it in this way so it will be epsilon uh sorry the result of this will be r hat again um uh, ij will be one divided by r square it will be one divided by r theta hat and that will be one divided by r sine of theta uh, phi hat. That's, those are the 
those are the 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 the, con the contravariant uh, 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 vector of the basis that we we deal with. So it's, I think that was the question that one of the attendees asked. Is there any other questions? Yes. Um, uh, Super ask uh, why there uh, are only diagonal uh, G sub I J. Is there any physical significance? Well, uh, because this, this cylindrical spherical coordinates, they are orthogonal coordinates. Is among the orthogonal coordinates. Uh, that is Cartesian uh, coordinate, which has this property. The cylindrical uh, coordinate has the same. Circular cylindrical coordinate has the same property. Elliptical cylindrical coordinate has the same property. Uh, spherical coordinate coordinate has the same property. So uh, I think I think if I'm not mistaken, you can look at the uh, a book by Muller, if I'm not mistaken, which you can look at the look at uh, eleven different coordinates. Okay. Uh, well, it, ha it may happen that you may introduce a coordinate which is not diagonal because, I mean, the off-diagonal element of the metric is given by epsilon i dot epsilon j, right? So when i is not equal to j, that will be off-diagonal term. And you are asking, how, how can I get off-diagonal term when these two, they are not orthogonal to each other? If they are not orthogonal to each other, then you will get up diagonal term, which means that you are working in a coordinate which is not diagonal. And it happens, you may have it. Uh, another coordinate which is very important and, and uh, another space which is extremely important is Minkowski space. The Minkowski space, well, the QIs that I'm introducing, let's call it in the Cartesian coordinate, I will write it as X. Uh, well, 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 I have to be careful because I don't like to go with that. CT, X, Y, and Z. This is uh, the Minkowski space. Some book, remember, some book, they consider time as an imaginary. They go with imaginary CT, okay? Me, I don't go with that. And CT, the dimension of the CT is length. Is the same dimension for X, which is length. The same dimension for Y, which is again length, and etc. So, well, the metric of this space, Gij, in Minkowski space, is given by 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. What is happening with Gij, which is the contravariant metric, is the same, right? It will be 1 divided by this, 1 divided by this, 1 divided by this. That will be 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So, uh, the unit vectors of this space, epsilon i, they are given by um, E0, which is a unit vector along the, 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 the increasing of the time. And it will be E1, E2, and E3. We call these, by the way, Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3. It is the four vectors, essentially, that we are dealing with. So now the question is that if you have a metric, what is happening with uh, uh, with uh, uh, with q i, uh, which is the covariant formalism of the q, and again that will be c t minus x minus y and minus z. So for short, people in in relativity, special relativity, they write these. The QI, we write it as X mu. And the first term, we write it as a CT. And the three terms there, we write it as a XI. And for QI, we write it as X mu. 
which is CT and minus XI. Okay. So now you can look at the, what is happening with the DX mu, which is C, uh, DCT and DXI. And the same way, what is happening D mu is DCT and D minus DI. And you can look at what is happening with DX mu dx mu, which is the summation over the dummy index, which is the length in that space. And uh, the result of this will be C is a constant. So the result of this will be C dt. And that one also will be C dt. So it will be the dot product of the two essentially. So it will be the summation over both of them. So you will get C squared dt squared minus dxi dxi which is means that you have a dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. So the result of this will be c squared dt squared minus dx squared dy squared dz squared. So what is the result of this? Is the summation over the dummy index. So, and is, is a, 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 this is a, 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 a contravariant contravariant vector. This is the covariant components of the vector. If you do the summation or both of these, you will have a scalar quantity. That's the reason that this is invariant. Means that is independent of the coordinate that you choose. Okay, uh, is, is there any question before going ahead with the, with the rest? Yes, uh, we have a an, an question from Mohammed Isa, based on the finding so far, which space the geometry of the universe fit the most? Which space, what do you mean, by coordinates or uh, you, mean, you mean the, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I understand the, uh, the question. Is the metric, is the coordinates, because all depends on the symmetry. I, I mean, you can, the physics is independent of the coordinated issues. In some of them is very easy to, to be solved. Oh, the metric, well, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, it's uh, well. I I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say something silly question, a silly silly answer. Um, you can choose any any metric that you want. I mean, is is uh, is up to your choice. You can. And, uh, yeah. Yes, there is another question from Amir Hussein. It is possible to get uh, the Lorentz's uh, transformation from the. Minkowski uh, metric? Uh, from the Minkowski metric, no, the transformation is a kind of rotation, right? The Lorentz transformation, if you consider uh, the, the time as an imaginary, it will be uh, a, a transformation, a, a, a rotation that you have it in that coordinate, which is given by hyperbolic. But indeed, the Lorentz transformation, it can be given by the boost, how to move it from one frame to another frame. In no relationship with, with the Minkowski metric so far, okay? I, I cannot obtain these. I can obtain the, uh, the uh, Lorentz transformation by using the fact that if I have two different frames, I have, if I have a length, I would, a measure here should be the same measure here if I do the transformation between the two. And uh, if I have a, a clock here, which is ticking, the tick should be the same here as well. So that, uh, and using the homogeneity of the space and time, I can, I can get the transformation or its transformation. Yes, we have another question from someone yes. asked, uh, Professor, can we define scalar uh, 
uh, as the product of both co or covariant vector, not only their mixture. Yes, absolutely. And this is one of the examples that I say is a contravariant vector. You do a contraction with a covariant vector, you will get a scalar quantity. Yes, the answer to your question is yes. Lovely. Okay, thank you. Thank you, of Professor. Course. Of course, thank you. So let's go with uh, with now uh, a little bit more complicated situation, and let's consider something um, more interesting. So assuming that we had a vector, I mean, let's say that we have the vector of a, right? And this vector of a indeed is given by a i epsilon i, right? And we just discussed that an epsilon i is derivative of r with respect to q i. And uh, that was given in the q i formalism. Formalism, which is the, which is the contravariant formalism that I had. <clears throat> uh, well, now the question that I have is for you is, uh, what happens with the transformation of the coordinate? So um, indeed, what is happening with A prime I, which will be a uh, derivative of uh, X, X prime, Xi with respect to Qj. And then I have the uh, Aj. And that was the transformation that I had. Good. Transformation or rotation of the coordinates of the coordinates, because that was that was a contravariant contravariant vector. Okay. Now the question is that uh, what is happening? Uh, well, remember, that was the situation. So I had x prime 1, x prime 2, and x prime 3. Uh, sorry, x1, x2, and x3. And x3. And any vector that I had, it was expanded in this term. And now what I will do, I will do a rotation. And then what uh, uh, I, I will get the a prime in that specific rotation or in that specific metric that I have. And now I want to take the derivative of A prime I with respect to the Q, let's say K. So, well, now this vector indeed it can be or can be expressed as a function, as a function of the contravariant parameters. And what I'm doing, I want to take the derivative of these uh, uh, contravariant uh, uh, um, vectors components. So essentially we call these the contravariant derivatives. Good. Is there any question? So, no, there is no any question. Wonderful. So I will take the derivative of QK and now the vector of a prime has two parts is a x prime uh, xi with respect to qr qj and aj so it looks like having two functions the first function and the second function i want to take the derivative i have to take the derivative of uh, first function plus the derivative of the second function so this is what i will write down so it will be uh, uh, write it in this way, derivative of the first function, qk, derivative of xi, qj, which is the first function, and aj. And then I have the derivative of the second function, which is xi, qj, derivative of aj with respect to qk. Okay, so I just expanded. The, the derivative. Good. So, uh, well, 
I, I, I'm asking myself, what is happening? I, mean, I, I have taken a vector component, which is the contravariant vector, and I'm taking the derivative of the contravariant vector, right? So do you agree that A prime here is a tensor of rank one, right? Do you agree with me? Because it's following the vector calculation. If you change the coordinate, that will be the result. Do you agree? Uh, let me see. Yes. Perfect. Mobin, Supra, do you agree with me? Now what is happening? I am taking the derivative of that vector, right? And I see that this part is not acting like a vector. And why this is not acting like a vector? Well, I don't see that the two derivatives only appear. So I, I don't see that A, I, J, A, I, K, oh, let's say, uh, uh, K, L will appear in the calculation. Instead, what I, what I have, I have two terms, one term here and another terms here. So I have to be very careful to jump to a conclusion that the derivatives or contra, contra, uh, contravariant derivative of a vector uh, components will be a tensor of uh, rank two. So I have to be very careful with, with this calculation. And let's do the calculation in, in an uh, elegant formalism. And in the elegant formalism, what I can say to you guys that, well, ah, it, 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 it is important to do this calculation first and also conclude this calculation as well. So let's do that. It, it's not so the, the, what I want to say to you guys, this is not following the, the, the tensor formalism calculation. It's going a little bit more complicated than that. And uh, in order to do this, this calculation, let's go with, uh, with the vector that we had previously. So I have written the vector here. And that was the vector of A, which was AI epsilon I, or indeed, or in the rotated coordinate, it is a prime, a, a, a prime, which is a prime i, epsilon prime i. Okay. And now I, I will I will write it this expression, this expression in terms of the vector notations. So the first component, if I want to, uh, I wanted to go with the vector notation, that will be the derivative of QK of A prime, right? And uh, the, the second term will be, uh, will be indeed, uh, uh, will, will be derivative of XI, right? And that will be, uh, I have to write it in this way. So QI, QJ, and that will be the derivative of uh, uh, that will be the derivative of uh, got uh, a a J, and that will be with respect to QK. That's the first term. That's this term because it's easier. And the second term, uh, I have to multiply by a i j in epsilon i j, and that the result of this will be derivative, second derivative of, uh, of uh, uh, second derivative of, um, should I write it in the second derivative? Because the first one will be the derivative with respect to r, that will be the derivative with respect to uh, QK and the uh, first one will be will be epsilon write it in this way derivative of R with respect to QK and that will be a vector which is a a k 
Okay. Yeah. Lovely. So I have these these results, which I have writing. Could you send the for okay? So this uh, that is the second term that I have, which is that term. So uh I have to stop here because uh, we are passing the time. And uh, I will encourage you to, to read these uh, quariant and contravariant formalism again. And the next lecture, I will go and I will drive you the quariant derivative. Okay, I, it takes uh, more than 10, 15 minutes because next lecture, I have to repeat it again. So I have to, I have to start from this point and I will drive you the Christopher notation. So I will stop here.